Welcome. We're going to focus on subtracting fractions with mixed numbers here. Taking your fraction, turning it into an improper fraction, finding a common denominator, subtracting, and then making it to a mixed number, which is not necessary. You can actually subtract just by borrowing. It just takes a little bit of skill in terms of remembering what to add. You're not just adding one as if it was tens. You have to think about how many pieces you have. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. First, I have a couple of examples that have common denominators, and then I'll do one that has a non-common denominator. When I'm subtracting here, 3 and 4 fifths minus 1 and 2 fifths, I do 4 fifths minus 2 fifths first just to make sure that I don't have to borrow anything. Like with subtracting, I keep the denominator. I subtract 4 minus 2 is 2, which I can do, and then 3 minus 1 to subtract the mixed numbers is 2, and I'm finished. Now, I reverse the fractions in the second one where I have 2 fifths minus 4 fifths. Keeping that denominator of 5, I can't do 2 minus 4 because then I get a negative. And that's not really how fractions work. I need more. And what that means is I need more of this. So I borrow from that 3 and it becomes a 2, which everybody's good with. But I'm not adding a 1 to make 12. That's not how many slices I have. I had fifths. So I had, let's say I've got a pizza sliced into fifths. If I have another pizza and I slice it into fifths, I have five more fifths. That means when I'm adding that whole number, I'm adding five fifths. Five fifths and two fifths is seven fifths here. Really what you're doing is you're just adding the denominator to the numerator. Five plus two is seven, and now I have seven fifths minus four fifths, which is three fifths, and I can do that. And then two minus one is one, and I'm finished. Now, let's try this with a, common, a not common denominator. When I'm finding a common denominator, I like to stack my fractions off to the sides, make sure I have space. 2 and 3 have an LCD of 6. The smallest number that 2 and 3 are both factors of is 6. That means I'm looking to turn them both into 6 using an equivalent fraction of 1. 3 times 2 gets me to 6, and 2 times 3 gets me to 6. Now I just carried over the whole number. I'm not really working with multiplying those or making them improper or anything. I'm just working with the fractions at this point. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. This turns into the problem of 5 and 4 sixths minus 2 and 3 sixths. I keep my denominator. 4 minus 3 is 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. And I'm good to go. Let's try another one that has a not common denominator where you also need to borrow. Say I have 6 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 5 sixth. I have to first find a common denominator. I'm going to keep the 6. I'm going to keep the 3. I'm going to try and figure out what number I need to use to find the common denominator. What's my common denominator 4 and 6? Remember, there's lots of common denominators, but the least common denominator is 12. That means I'm going to need to multiply 4 by 3 over 3, or 4 by 3 to get 12, which is 3 over 3, and then 6 by 2 to get 12, so I multiply by 2 over 2. Because remember, I have to change the numerator as well. 1 times 3 is 3, 5 times 2 is 10. That means that I have the subtraction problem of 6 and 3 twelfths minus 3 and 10 twelfths. I carry the 12, I drop down my 12, but I can't do 3 minus 10 because I would get a negative 7. It doesn't work. I'm not working with integers. I need to borrow. I borrow from the 6 and this becomes a 5. But remember, I'm not just adding 1. I'm not turning this into 4. I'm not turning this into 13. I'm taking 12 slices, 12 more slices, and adding it to 3, which means that becomes 15. 15 minus 10 is 5. 5 minus 3 and 2, and so my difference was 2 and 5 twelfths. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped.